Strong magics have awakened the dead from their eternal sleep. As a result, undead zombies and skeletons now roam throughout the island. The undead still carry the remains of their old equipment that they possessed in life. As the undead don't have internal organs and they don't need to breathe, poison is not an effective weapon against them. Hello everybody! And welcome to another video! Oh yeah, did you guys like that? It's the party members saying hello to us. Oh yeah, so um, last episode was kind of crazy. There were tons of comments because I said, hey guys, you can decide where we're going to go. And you guys really took that voting to heart. So um, we have multiple options. We're out here in front of the castle. Now one of the uh, options I basically gave you guys was a lie. I'm sorry. Uh, but it was basically this one, the castle. Some dude looked at us at the last episode. Hello, who were you? And he closed the entrance. And for what it's worth, he didn't look like the same guy we saw in the dungeon before. But maybe we can't say that for sure just yet. Outside the entrance of the castle, then, we have these four, like, Buddha kind of statues. And um, our ultimate goal is going to be to get inside. Uh, so you can kind of see where this is going. Before we got this orb of fire, now you might be wondering, what the hell does this essence of fire even do? Well, you can actually try and place it on these pedestals. There, it doesn't really seem to do much. It just sits there. There, it doesn't really seem to do much. It just sits there. There, it doesn't seem to do much. Here... The thing has reacted. So, um, this was like the Shrine of Fire. And I guess what we're looking for then, guys, it would be pretty easy to assume, is a few more orbs, combine them together, uh, or gems, into some of these essences. And if you remember last episode, we saw one of them out here too. There's some enemies flying around over there. But check it out. So this episode is starting basically in the opposite position the previous was, one was. Well, we're looking across. That was kind of cool. Um, so the castle was just one place, obviously. A lot of you guys wanted to see this last anyway. Someone else was asking me to show off the sky and what it looks like so there you go it does look very nice maybe not as pretty as the night sky but uh very nice anyway um so yeah the uh castle was one many of you guys wanted to see it last we're kind of going to be forced to see it last the uh next big one was the cache which we absolutely will do this episode everyone wanted to see this place probably because i mentioned it was a small little cave and yes, the name would tip off that we actually get some interesting loot in there. First, I'm going to take us over here to the question mark, question mark, question mark left. Because it will give you a good idea of the way that the game is going to be playing from here on out. Um, we're going to move around and I believe there was still a war alive here somewhere that attacked me a second ago. But over here, very importantly, is a lockpick. Now remember, we did mark on our map before, or we should have marked on our map. The location of, here it is over here, a chest we couldn't open before, remember, that uh, we needed a lockpick for. So maybe we could go back and check that out. Uh, there's also some gloves here. I noticed Jonker isn't even wearing any gloves, so we'll equip those on him. Oh, he's going to be so good in a second. We have um, the wall of the castle here, but also this scary-looking barrier thing. And to get through this, we're going to need a gold key. Do you remember this from the very first map? There wasn't even one in Twiggery, but in the first map, there was a gold key that we could use to get to a special treasure. Well, there's this out here. For what it's worth, that's a wand. Here's some of the wargs. Damn it. Thought you were going to be right next to us there. We won't be needing those bombs for a little while. I guess I'll get them off of my toolbar in a second. <laughs> wow, I was planning on editing that out. Uh, I realized my speakers were really loud, so I just stopped in the middle of a fight to turn them down. And then I realized, because I play at a standing desk, so I'm quite far away from the speaker controls. Then I realized as I came back that I just stood there with a warg in front of us. But he wasn't even doing anything. He just stood there staring at us and didn't really attack or anything. So anyway, we've got some kind of a secret there. No key to activate it. Um, before we head across that bridge over there, let's explore the last of this little area. And you will find um, that we, uh, we come to a place called The Hub, which is another cave-looking area. Uh, now, it ca may seem a little bit overwhelming. I'm just going to break this, just in case there's anything on the floor. No, there's not. So this may seem a little bit overwhelming, but honestly, it's not. If we move down, I know we've got the cache, and we've got the hub, and we've got various places. This is a really worthwhile place to check out and familiarize yourself with for future exploration. So we'll get the torch back here. Oh, damn it, was burnt out. Well, we really need a torch if we're going to see what's going on down here. Um, here we've got a door that seems to be closed. Okay, sure. Interesting. Over here, we've got another door with a special glowing looking button we haven't seen before. If we click it, you'll find you enter a chamber. If I had a torch, it would look a bit brighter in here. Sorry about that, guys. We find a chamber with some, uh, like, alcoves that don't seem to have anything going on in them. But one of them is already lit up 
with a teleporter and if we click we'll see this says shipwreck beach so this will actually teleport us back to shipwreck beach the hub therefore is um, an underground area that you can use to quick travel almost around the island and as you explore on you get further and further away this is a nice way of jumping around so here we've got keel breach bog but the teleporter isn't activated these will only activate once you've actually explored to that specific region the regular way for the first time as you can imagine here we've got a place called the cemetery and over here lastly is the hamlet of storm breach these are by no means all of the areas in the game especially when it comes to like underground places you can only imagine but yeah, we've got the hub. What's kind of cool, and I did get some advice from people before about this, is you've got a lot of alcoves in here, and they were suggesting if you've got spare stuff, instead of keeping them in someone's inventory or even throwing them in random chests, it could be fun to just fill up these alcoves with the spoils of your adventures, right? Oh, we do have a torch. And you can just fill them up, and supposedly by the end of the game, it can look quite impressive in here. So I, that's what I'm going to do. That actually sounds pretty cool. So we've got these berries here that we really didn't know what they were, but they sound kind of dangerous. The mud wart, I guess I'll keep. This flintlock we don't need for now. The pellets we don't need for now. The Zafi Shemag we'll bring back over here as well. Just for later. The throwing knives we don't really need. I mean, you could just dump it on the floor as well, to be honest. You just want to be a little bit cleaner than that. Um, so, yeah. There's also, again, now you might be even more curious, this door. So what the heck could be behind there? Another collection of teleporters? Well, we shall see. I do want to take us back to Shipwreck Beach just for a second. Um, number one, as I've explained in the LP before, because it's great for getting food. And of course, any team with a farmer is going to do really well with food. I kind of really want to see what it'd be like being, playing with four farmers. Just how feasible it would be. It would probably take a lot of grind, but you could just keep scaling and scaling. So, of course, they drop two turtle steaks each, which is fantastic. Um, but also, I wanted to bring us over here and demonstrate something I missed to you guys. This was what we opened with the statue, right? The, and we got the gold key. Seems to be nothing else here. Well, funnily enough, if you dig here... You get a message that says, found nothing, but you will in fact notice a potion appeared on the floor, an energy potion. So this is like the first energy potion of the game that you can get, and it just randomly appears when you dig. I thought for the longest time that Grimrock 2 was a game where you'd only have to dig if you found some kind of clue or you very you were very keen-eyed and you managed to deduct that there was some kind of a secret there. It's not true. You can very rarely, from digging in almost random arbitrary spots, get stuff like this energy potion so uh, I have been keeping my eye on where they are and hopefully I'll be able to show them to you guys but that was the first and even if we don't see any more they're just minor 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 little items kind of interesting though it really tweaks the game something very small like that hearing something like that can can completely change the way a completionist will play this game it will change them from having a fairly fluid experience to stopping every single little spot moving forward digging each and you can you, it would just be insane of course we can't dig on the uh, the bridge here so let's cross um, and you'll notice straight away that this little bottle of water if you look carefully there's no other way to get into it unless maybe you could swim under the bridge which it turns out you can't and over there is a ladder up so that's going to be something we want to pay attention to in just a second before that though let's pull this switch and you'll see in the background over there it actually opens and closes that gate for us well where is this? Ah, remember we found this a while ago, the closed gate. So now that we've opened this, we have very quick access back to Twigroot Forest, back to wherever we came from before, and across the river without having to go across that massive detour we did before. So that's pretty cool. Here you'll also notice we have a Warhammer. So Jonkit is finally moving to his heavy weapon. So we can unequip this longsword here. I never read the description of the longsword, by the way. A mighty weapon. The longsword is the weapon of choice for the Thearian and Knights. It is renowned for its ability to impale even well-armored foes. Interesting, that kind of hints at the special attack. Let's look at the core difference between heavy weapons. Um, let's go to our skill tree. At light weapons, um, you can dual wield them at the third skill level. And at the fifth skill level, you can dual wield any. But with heavy weapons, which are not light enough to dual wield, okay? Instead, you just get a perk at five. And this is that at the fifth skill level, you can wield the two-handed weapons now in one hand. So if you max both out, you could be dual wielding heavy weapons, as far as I understand. Which would be crazy, right? But I haven't quite got to that point. So um, that's like the core difference with the skills. But also a theme of heavy weapons are that they are slightly slower deal maybe the same kind of damage range but they ignore enemies armor just like the bows do 
or the missile weapons do as opposed to the thrown weapons. So that's the idea. Uh, we also get this ability called stun when we get one more level in heavy weapons, which we'll be able to show off uh, as and when we get to it. There's also some fish and more pellets. I uh, Didn't I just throw a bunch of pellets away? They were on tick root, weren't they? Damn it, and now they're already back in our inventory, whatever. So we've got that, we've opened our way back up, but also do remember this. Now you would have been hearing the telltale signs of an orb for a while now. As you drop in, do remember that down on the floor here, we find two crossbow quarrels, which is really cool. Uh, was there anything on the floor? No, no fish here. But as we climb up this ladder, you will find uh, a tattered cloak, which I believe Tikrit can wear. Yep, nice. We find some reed gauntlets. Now, we found a reed helmet for Tikrit in the previous episode. Remember, this helmet is skillfully bound from hundreds of reeds of varying sizes. Now we've got the gauntlets. When clenched to a fist, the reeds warp around the wearer's hands tightly and improve its grip. So Tikrit can wear that. That's fine. Again, same theme. It's more protection and evasion, but you want some light armor to be able to wear them. And over here is that orb we saw all that time ago from across the river. We finally got here. And over there is the Shrine of Pain. Well, there's also a ladder just nearby us, so I'm going to decide to climb up this ladder. And before we head to the Shrine of Pain, which is definitely our next goal, if you look at kind of the way we've explored the map, we've done all of the south, really. There's this tiny little area here, which I'll take us to in a second. But we've done all of this. We've checked all over here on the left. We've checked the entrance to the, the castle. There's just this Shrine of Pain now and the various exits that have been in the waters and so forth. Well, let's go check this out. Um, over here we've got a lizard on a stick, which I guess we'll give to Junker, and we won't feed to Lotopatho this time. Uh, and now, of course, because we opened up that gate, where am I going, we want to go this way, we can actually come back over. We could obviously go to that lockpick chest as well again and see, uh, try our luck at opening it up, but I'm not going to bother with that just yet. Instead, let's move over. And um, I want to show you guys two secrets we missed in the last episode. Really basic secrets. There's nothing like too crazy about them. They were kind of easy things that we can go back to. But the first was related to, so this was the entrance to the bog, okay? And here was this fence. Now, just near where we picked up the bow and arrow for the first time is a secret button, which opens up this gate. And you get the secret ding noise. You get to move flush against the walls of the castle here. And um, there is not only some stuff for alchemy, more falcon skyer, but there's a chest. And what did we just get? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lotopatho has got it. We got a lockpick. So go on, Mr. Rogue, unlock the chest, see what we've got. Get another firebomb, which is good since we just used a bunch. And here is the rogue hood. So we now have two pieces of the rogue set. A dark hood that covers the head. Protection plus five, dex plus one. That's huge. It's so powerful. Uh, do we want the peasant's cap? Yeah, fine. We'll just start dumping all of our stuff in the hub. That should be awesome. So that's really, really good for Loto Pafo, and I'm pretty happy we managed to get the secret. Further, there's another one nearby that is, um, will help us complete our reed set. Now, I'm not 100% confident in this, but it seems like maybe the whole reed set is on this map. And if it is, it means I'm just missing, like, one secret here. But do you remember as we originally came here? Um, there was now, if you think about it, this access to, access to this body of water here. And if you look over in the distance, there is an, uh, another underwater cave. So we're going to drop down. And you might think, well, why can't you just swim under this bridge? Well, if you have a look, you'll see this bridge actually was blocked off. This was where we pulled that lever before on the other side. Do you remember? Before we threw the rock to get across. Uh, now let me go catch my breath. Now pulling that lever, what that did was it enabled us once we got on this side, it opened up this. It pulled down this gate. Allowing us to get some uh, extra loot, which we'll take a keen look at now uh, before we drown. So here we get the reed leg mail. Uh, so this will go onto Tikrit here. This leg mail is very flexible despite its thick construction. And he's starting to look pretty good. So yeah, I guess I'm missing the boots and the chest, right? I don't think there's, uh, there were ever reed cloaks. Like, they were never parts of the armor sets in the previous game, so... That's fine. Um, and the other thing, of course, we got here were some frost bombs, which I suppose we're actually supposed to be on Loto Pafo the whole time, so I'll get that off of Sanon. Sanon's just going to fill up with scrolls. He's just going to slowly go insane reading all this information. Um, so, yeah, there is also the underwater cave. That will take us to the bog. I am hesitant to go there just yet, though. I think you guys were right in saying maybe we should uh, wait a little bit before we head there. Fishy, 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 fishy. Got it. Thank God. Okay, brilliant. Oh, I would have been so sad if, we, if we'd missed that. Yes, and we didn't even start drowning. Brilliant. Let's save. That seems like a pretty good time. And how about now? Uh, let's do the cash. Let's do the cash. We'll do the cash, and then we'll go to the Shrine of Pain. It just makes more logical sense, okay? So we're going to head into the dark now, which is great because night is just falling. And nobody likes to be outside during the night. The cash. 